Okay, continuing um, with this, um, again, Wendy's uh, Wendy's mouth is about to go out of uh, Jack Nicholson's uh, face here, uh, which is one of the reasons I believe that Wendy and Jack are also representations of Stanley Kubrick. We'll see that later on. Uh, this is Allman here, and uh, Bill Watson is about to come in. Uh, He's supposed to be, I think, the janitor or something. Uh, yeah, he's the janitor at a, at in the book. He's the janitor in the hotel, and I mean, this guy does not look like a janitor. Uh, he looks like a CIA man or NSA man uh, when he comes in. That does not look like a janitor. Uh, we'll see the creepy things. Uh, one thing I want to point out about the mirror aspect of the. Uh, uh, here that you do have a mirror shot in, in some sense. Um, what I mean by a mirror, uh, of course you've got Jack and him over here, but you've got seven pictures uh, right here on this wall, and uh, you have seven pictures on here. I hope it shows up that there's two pictures right here too on YouTube uh, that I'm posted on. We'll see them later on though when, they, when we get a shot of Bill. We'll see those two pictures if you don't believe me right now or you can't see them. But there are seven pictures here and that's Stanley Kubrick setting up a, a mirror right here, a, a symbolism right here. Uh, okay, let's take a look. There's there's the two pictures right there. That uh, So there's your seven pictures uh, that were on this wall. I know this sounds trivial, but mirrors you're going to see play a very important uh, one thing I want you to notice is uh, the, the, the wooden eagle is actually right behind um, right behind Ullman's head. It's, it's back there. And, and, and if you, I don't know if you remember the original shot, but the, 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 the eagle was uh, right, uh, right on the cross, the middle crossbar uh, there. So, um, so the, the eagle, Ken Stanley Kubrick has actually moved it. So uh, the, the eagle's there. We will see the eagle later on, but Kubrick has moved it behind Ullman's head to mean uh, Apollo is coming out, just like Wendy was going to come out of Jack's uh, mouth. Uh, the Apollo 11 is going to come out of uh, uh, Ullman, Ullman's mouth. Um, uh, th that's what he's talking here, even though the what it looks like is he's talking about the hotel, but what he's talking about is uh, Apollo 11. We'll see all the meanings of that. The other thing I want you to notice is this pen... Uh, this pen right here and this cigarette right here. Uh, I want you to notice those uh, three items uh, because Kubrick is going to do some funny stuff with that uh, to symbolize uh, uh, whether we're uh, uh, ta what we're talking about. So uh, uh, here he is uh, talking about when it starts and where it stops. Uh, October 30th, interesting Halloween when you wear a mask, uh, you hide yourself or you deceive people is uh, is uh, is when. Um, hotel closes. So the hotel closes when Jack is going to take care of the hotel is when most other people would be out uh, hiding themselves under masks or something is going to be masked when the hotel closes. Also notice this says May 15th. We'll see a reference to that re date later on. Hopefully I'll remember and point it out. Uh, but I just wanted to show that. Um, it's funny that uh, one thing that I don't think has been pointed out here is that sometimes Ullman, uh, he's supposed to look a little bit like Jack Kennedy, you know, uh, JFK, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, the president asking Jack uh, to, uh, to fake the moon landing or whatever. But, but sometimes when I see the fingers like this, he's got these fingers, he, he almost looks like an eagle sitting on a, on a perch. You know what I mean? On, on a tree. He, you'll see that, and he does that quite a bit often. It just, whenever I saw those, I don't know why no one has ever pointed out that he looks like an actual eagle uh, on there. And actually, the hair, actually, a lot of people point out that the, his hair is supposed to look like Jack, uh, John F. Kennedy, but it, that also makes him look like an eagle, too. Uh, Sam the Eagle from the, the Muppets. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's a nice mirror shot. Uh, you know, you see the mirror shot, uh, the two people there and there. Now, there's something more important about this shot that uh, is very, very interesting and points out that uh, Bill Watson here is not the janitor, even though Bill Watson is the is the janitor in, uh, in the book, he's not a janitor here. And uh, finally, we can't see the eagle, and notice it is on the crossbar. So the previous uh, shot, uh, it's not uh, not that one, but but definitely that one. He's got his head all the way over. No, 
the, the, the Eagles not at the there's a clear there's a window pane and everything in between and yet when we look at this shot no the Eagle if it was if, if Stanley Kubrick was shooting the Stanley Kubrick has moved it again you know uh, to do this but more importantly is that Eagle is coming through Allman's head and the other Eagle is coming through uh, uh, Bill Watson's head both these guys are uh, affiliated with uh, the Eagle uh, capsule that landed on the moon that's what this symbol is for. It's not just lucky. Uh, oh, it was an accident. Oh, uh, Kubrick thought he'd just put a bunch of wooden eagles in the in the, the, the in the room. No, this we will see uh, things by people's heads, and that is what they're talking about. Uh, so I know this. So when you uh, see this movie and watch the conversation, you think they're not talking about it, but we will see how uh, how Kubrick has hidden all this stuff. Uh, notice, uh, I told you to notice the pen, uh, the pen here, we'll see it, I'm sorry, the, 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 the uh, things uh, here, and the cigarette is gone. Uh, something, he, he's starting to talk about isolation, uh, an isolation uh, to Jack, that, that Jack might have a problem with being at the hotel by himself. What he's really saying is that uh, Stanley Kubrick is going to have a problem because he's not going to be able to tell anybody that he uh, faked the moon landing filmed it, and, 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 and then Elman is saying, how, how are you going to be about that? You know, are you going to be able to, to hold that secret? You know, and then he threatens uh, Kubrick, or Jack Nicholson, and says, because the last guy, uh, um, uh, here you can see the, the pen has switched uh, from before. We'll see, I'll flip back and forth, but the pen, the, both these pens have, uh, have moved, and the cigarette is gone still, and we'll see them come back in a while. And of course, the eagle has moved back again. As he's he's moved as Kubrick has hidden it behind his uh, almond's head again. Um, so uh, here he is uh, telling Jack, "Hey, you better be able to keep a secret." And uh, Jack, interesting enough, if you watch this whole sequence, Jack looks into the camera. <laughs> That's Stanley Kubrick looking into the camera. I mean, actors don't, you're not supposed to look inside the camera. I mean, that's the, that's a, that's an actor's no-no. So, and that's not just not Jack Nicholson. That's a, that's of course uh, Kubrick telling Jack Nicholson, I want you to look in the camera. So there are several shots of, uh, of, uh, in this conversation that they have where Jack actually looks in the camera. That's another thing that other people have pointed out on the internet. I, I did not originate that. So I thank all those people who've who have given me the other ideas, and I'm including all their ideas um, uh, all, on top of all, all my ideas, uh, so that, that 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 you get the full story, you know, or as full as I can think. Uh, notice the cigarette is back, the pen, uh, the pen is over here, and the pen has moved. So these three items have moved. Uh, Kubrick is giving you three signals, and that's the other thing you notice about Kubrick and The Shining is he gives you multiple confirmations in, in each shot that I'm not screwing around. This is not a continuity mistake, even though they're listed in IMDb as kind of continuity mistakes. And, and maybe there are continuity mistakes in in The Shining, but uh, these are not. And not when he not when not when uh, uh, Kubrick. Uh, uh, gives you confirmation that he knows what he's doing here. Uh, he's saying, before I turn you over to Bill, which is back to hotel business, which is probably this. But we're about to see the those cigarettes and pens move immediately. And you saw the pen move, and this move, and the cigarette gone. It literally on the on the second thing. So I'll, I'll go back. See, watch the white uh, the white pen right here and see the cigarette and see the pen and then I'll go forward watch this and the very next shot this is not a continuity mistake and it's impossible to screw that up and besides which they're going back and forth and back and forth uh, um, and here he is here's Ullman threatening uh, 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 Jack with a story about uh, you know if you if you say anything uh, we're gonna have a big tragedy here uh, again not just in the winter of 1970 so he tells the story about uh, Charles grading the widow, uh, the winter tank, card taker, and he came up with his two little girls. In the book, there's only one, they only have one girl. Uh, Kubrick changed it to two girls for a reason you will, I will explain later on, and other people have explained uh, later on. Um, anyways, he, I didn't put the thing in, but he says he, he chopped up the, the girls and, um, and uh, uh, stacked them and the wife and stack them neatly in a room in the West Wing. Um, when we see later on, I'm going to, the spoiler alert, we're going to see the two girls uh, chopped up. 
uh, later on, and they're not in a room. We, I will try to point that out. Hopefully, I, I will remember. But they're not in a room, and the wife is not with the girls when when they're chopped up. So all of this is kind of a lie. Oh, it is a lie. It's a huge continuity mistake. If it is this, but it's not a continuity mistake. What this is supposed to be is it's supposed to be a threat uh, to Jack Nicholson. Notice Jack Nicholson is not going, "Oh my God!" You know, two two poor little girls, you know, chopped up, and then the wife chopped up. Oh my God! He's he's looking at like at Ullman, like he's being threatened. You know, and then that's exactly what Stanley Kubrick uh, wanted this uh, thing. And in fact, watch uh, what watch what they do later on to show you. Uh, uh, here he says that Charles Grady put two, uh, both barrels of his shotgun in his mouth and uh, blew his brains out, which is uh, what we'll do to you, Stanley, if you talk. Uh, here he talks about a claustrophobic reaction when people are shut together over long periods of time. So. Hey, was, again, no, no, no concern about the little girls or the wife being chopped up. You know, no, there. Are, if you watch Jack, he looks like a mortician when he's watching, when he's listening to the story. And sure enough, what does Jack say with a smile? That is quite a story. So, <laughs> you mean it's not reality? I mean, after all, Omen just told you it really happened. Why are you calling it a story? You know, and Omen is about to confirm uh, what Jack Nelson says. Yes, it is. It's a story. And look at the... This is the interesting thing. This is one of the few shots you do get to see the eagle. And and watch what Ullman says the very next thing. And if you watch the whole interview, Ullman has never once looked up. Never once in the interview, uh, except for what you're about to see. You see the Apollo eagle lander right behind his head. And the very next thing that Ullman says is... It's still hard for me to believe it actually happened here. Where is here? Well, look at his eyes. <laughs> Up. <laughs> He's looking at the moon. It's hard for me to believe it actually happened on the moon. I mean, uh, and you don't see a lot of people who show the, 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 when you watch the movie with the, with the, uh, the, uh, subtitles, you get a whole different story. It's, uh, neat to see how, uh, how Kubrick wrote this and how he directed uh, the people, the actors, to do what he told them, even though I'm sure the actors were like, why the hell should I look up? Shouldn't I just look at Jack? Uh, no, Kubrick told them, I need you to look up. Just, just He was playing games with it. He, he, I'm sure he never told any of the actors what they were doing, because there's, there's lots of movies of people talking about. I've read books of The Shining, and, and nobody knew what Kubrick was doing. Yeah, and of course it makes sense, you know? Kubrick, uh, he was having a lot of fun with this chess game. He was very proficient at. Uh, anyways, again, Jack, uh, Jack, uh, not, 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 not reacting the way normal people react when they hear about chopped up people. Okay, here's another fade shot. This is one of the things that shows Jack is connected to uh, Jack. He, Kubrick is connecting Jack to Danny. They are both the same people, and they, um, they are Stanley Kubrick. Um, one thing I want to show you here is, uh, and this is the well, this is one of the biggest reveals that I've I have not seen on the internet. I mean, it's possible these new ideas that I've that I'm about to point out are on the internet. I just have seen so many of these shining uh, uh, lectures, and and I've never seen this one pointed out. I've seen people point out Dopey here. Here's Dopey right here, and uh, I mean, but people go, oh, Dopey, that means Danny is stupid, Jack. Jack Nicholson is stupid. He doesn't realize what he's getting into. You know what I mean? So that's the symbolism. Uh, no, there is a different symbolism for Dopey that I believe. Stanley Kubrick, normally people would look at, you know, you'd look at a child standing on this. It's a little precarious. So your eyes are drawn to this. And your, your eyes in no way should be drawn to Dopey. That's for sure. But there's a reason Dopey is here. And the reason Dopey is here is not is to act as a mirror to Danny. And if you look at Dopey and Danny, and you cut a mirror, there's something right here. And what is that something? Well, it's something that normally uh, uh, appears uh, in a bathtub, a rubber duck. <laughs> and uh, if anything, you guys will think I'm really crazy when I point this out, but by the time I'm done with that rubber duck, you'll be blown away. Okay? So, uh... I'm saying the rubber duck is important, uh, and we will see why in 
just a couple of minutes, okay? So, remember the rubber duck. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, we're going to go see Danny. You can see the rubber duck a little bit better. Uh, Danny is saying, I, I didn't get the subtitles, but he's saying that, that Jack is going to call Wendy, that he's got the job at the hotel, and so that's why we go to Wendy. This is an interesting shot, too, that is something very important, which we'll have to remember for a little while, and that is the Kool-Aid uh, canisters. Here's one gigantic Kool-Aid canister. Here's another gigantic Kool-Aid canister, and here's a third Kool-Aid canister. Now, I don't know about your houses, but we, in my, uh, in my day, we had the Kool-Aid uh, little packages. Uh, and we didn't have the gigantic, my mom didn't buy the gigantic things. But one thing's for sure, there is no reason to have three gigantic Kool-Aid uh, Kool canisters. I mean, you're really a prepper waiting for the end of the world. I mean, that's enough Kool-Aid to last you three years uh, 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 there. So, but please remember these Kool-Aid canisters. I will be mentioning them uh, again. The only other thing that's kind of interesting is um, this uh, picture on the thing. Almost looks like a rocket. Uh, it looks like the sunrise, but there's a weird black thing here. You know, it's floating, uh, almost like a rocket. So that the sun looks like the, the rocket's uh, flare, you know, the engine flare coming out of the exhaust uh, here. So that's just kind of an interesting thing. And, and that would fit well with the Kool-Aid and the rocket would fill, uh, uh, fit well. I'm going to explain that a little bit later too. Uh, I'll just uh, wet your whistle with uh, uh, the line, uh, which people don't say anymore very much, and that is, uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Not to be disparaging towards uh, 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 the Kool-Aid, which I loved all, all when I was a kid, but there's a there's a there's an old vernacular that says "Don't drink the Kool-Aid from the 70s." Uh, that 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 meant uh, don't believe everything that you hear, including me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> believe what you see, not what you hear. Uh, so, anyways, that was that's what "Don't drink the Kool-Aid" meant. So it's interesting that Kool-Aid is right by what looks like a rocket picture. Okay. Uh, here's Danny uh, talking to Tony, his finger. Why don't you want to go to the hotel? And uh, Tony uh, doesn't want to tell him. He forces him, and Tony shows him the blood. Uh, interesting thing about the, this shot is, uh, first of all, it's a mirror shot. There's even a radiator on this side and a radiator on this side. There's a picture here. There's a picture here. There's a chair here. There's a chair here. I mean, this is as mirrored as you can get. But there's a break in the symmetry in that this floor is, says uh, floor number one, and this says floor number two uh, here. Uh, so uh, what is 1 and 2? It's 12, which I pointed out in my graphic on 237. Uh, 2 plus 3 plus 7 is 12 uh, there. So there's Stanley putting a message uh, in the uh, elevators. I did not make that one up. I found that uh, people have, many, multiple people have mentioned that on the uh, YouTube videos. Uh, and then uh, lots of blood coming out. A um, lot of interpretation of this blood. Some people say, uh, you know, it's Indian blood from uh, all the Indians that were killed in America uh, in the Western days. Um, I have a, here, at this point, we don't know much about the story, and we really haven't had too much Indian artifacts uh, here, except maybe this rug over here. Uh, so there hasn't been a lot of Indian references uh, quite yet. So I don't think this blood means Indians right now. Um, one of the things this could be is that... Um, is that Tony is saying don't go? He's saying don't go to the hotel, which is saying don't go, don't go work, don't go work on this fake Apollo moon landing. Uh, you'll be working with NASA, and uh, Kubrick, of course, was Jewish, and um, there was a lot of, of course, Werner von Braun. I'm not saying this. The, uh, everybody knows this is this is factual that Werner von Braun was part of the SS and uh, he was the head our head rocket guy and he was the head rocket guy for the Nazis and he, he did uh, he did quite a bit of uh, bad things uh, uh, including slave labor uh, to make sure his rockets were built um, and uh, and uh, maybe what Kubrick is saying here is uh, this is uh, all the, the the Jewish people or the the concentration camps and all the blood of, uh, and not just that, but the ar all the army men, um, American army men and, 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 and the armies, and this is the blood of World War II, and, uh, and, uh, and Tony is telling uh, 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 
Danny not to work. Why are you working? You have blood on your hands if you work with, uh, not, you know, ex-Nazis on the on the thing. I mean, you're Jewish, you know. Should you really um, uh, be collaborating with uh, ex-Nazis? These people killed your people. So uh, that's that's what I see from this symbolism here. Uh, the only one, the other one that's pointed out, I don't want to mention it now, but I'll mention it later on. Uh, we'll see. Uh, anyways, another mirror shot. And there's your blood. Uh, uh, this is a black uh, uh, edit here. It's not a fade edit. Uh, uh, so he, uh, Kubrick did use some black edit. And he's got a voiceover, which is why you're seeing uh, subtitles. This is the doctor talking to Danny. And the next shot we see uh, the doctor. Uh, Danny apparently has had a, some sort of seizure in the thing. And he's uh, now in bed. Uh, Wendy has called the doctor to see, make sure that uh, Danny is okay, you know, because he, he fainted in the bathroom after he saw the blood, and so on. Um, okay, what is interesting about this shot? Well, the first thing that's interesting is, where's the rubber duck? Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit, uh, but uh, you know what? The, you can't see the rubber duck. now. Now you might say, well, the angle is different. So the rubber duck is behind the uh, the rubber duck is behind the curtain. It just Kubrick has shot at a different angle. Uh, if he was shot at this angle, he, you could see the rubber duck. Uh, no, and Kubrick actually made this shot on purpose. Uh, here, there's a very specific shot why he has this panoramic shot of the room because look what we have right here, the duck. That's where I'm going to stop you with a little cliffhanger for the next part. Uh, 